What is up? What is up? I'm gonna try this again. I tried it. Next thing you know, it went off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, uh, what is up, everyone? Uh, I know this is Wednesday. Uh, normally, I don't even come on Wednesdays, but I am off for the next two days because I have a shoot on Friday, actually a reshoot of a scene that I lost a few months ago. So that is why I'm on tonight. And I'm just going to talk about things like I always do. I appreciate everybody that sits here and just listens to me just blabber on about things, uh, mostly time filmmaking and other things. But uh, so... Uh, before I do that, uh, I want to say early this week, I'll probably come back on Saturday and repeat this by saying thank you all for all the new people who came onto my page this week's has so far. Appreciate you guys wanting to know what's going to production, see what's happening, what I'm doing, follow us uh, here at Gains Entertainment um, and what we're going to do and all the stuff that uh, we get ourselves into every now and then. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of times you're going to see that in, in here in Gains Entertainment, especially when I'm online and stuff like that, you know, I don't have a whole lot of pictures of like going to the parties and all these things like that. And if we do go somewhere, a lot of times it's kind of limited because we're really more concerned about just doing our work and everything, trying to get things done, like, you know, network or what have you, whatever. Uh, but we're going to try to put more into that. And also, too, I'm always talking about having some with me at times, you know, to go over, you know, maybe their lives, their, uh, you know, just just have an interview, pretty much, just pretty much, just have an interview, you know. So that's 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 what I'm into. So uh, today, uh, well, tonight, really, um, I want to talk about the challenges of indie filmmaking. So uh, that's one of the um, points I want to make tonight. Just want to discuss something, something um, quick about that. And the reason I want to talk about that because I wish somebody was there when I was younger doing my filmmaking, like, yo, you got to watch out for this or do this or do that. And no one ever like, spoke to me straight up about like, listen, this is what you have to be concerned with. Because a lot of times you get people or people who just talk about in generalization, but never really about like the little things, those idiosyncrasies, those little, those small things that you have to find out on your own. But it'd be nice if I had a heads up on something, you know? Um, but I, you know, I just I just thought about it tonight. I, I wasn't planning to come on tonight, um, but I was watching on Netflix, right? I was watching an interview with David Letterman and Jerry Seinfeld, and uh, I was watching it and everything. And I was like, man, you know, these are like two heavyweights going at each other. They weren't arguing, but they were just kind of interviewing each other and bouncing, um, you know, their opinions and stuff off each other pretty aggressively as. Like they're at their house on their couch just talking. I love that realism, the realism, you know? They weren't trying to be cute for anybody. They didn't really care what people thought about what they said or, or how they were coming off each other. And I really, really uh, appreciate that. That was something that was like, yo, why can't more people do this? You know, it's not just an interview, but just speak to each, each other as there's no camera, there's no one there. Just be realistic, you know? Because we all know hey, listen, we all don't a lot of times speak the way we do in front of the camera as opposed to when we're off the camera, right? And we, the biggest thing is always trying to find, you know, those moments of those people, you know, um, or try to get them in an environment where people can see the realism of anyone's interview or whoever they are, right? That's always the thing, right? That's why we have reality TV, to try to get as real as we possibly can during any type of live event or taped event or something, right? And just tonight, you have to check it out. Letterman and Jerry Seinfeld, and just look at that interview, you know, that really, I really, just, it just inspired me to say, you know what, this is what we were looking for. You know, those guys are just going at it. I really, it was just something that is, it was just inspiring to see that. And you know what, when I start to have interviews or whatever, I'm just want. Both of us or whoever I'm going to be with, just talk like we were, like in my couch, just talking. You know, let the world just see it. I'm not going to try to color, you know, code anything or make it look nice or pretty or whatever have you, uh, but just kind of be realistic about what's happening. So that's 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 just something that I plan to do anyway. But um, yeah, so those anyway. So the challenges of indie filmmaking is what I want to uh, kind of get into a little bit. And uh, I think there are a lot of situations that people don't bring up normally uh, or you don't hear. Um, say if you want to get into, you know, indie filmmaking of any level, 
um, mostly India, of course. Um, there are things that you really be, need to be concerned with, and um, and what's not just the challenges, but the rewards that you get from it. Um, the biggest reward you get from it is freedom. Um, the lot of the challenges is time. Um, that is the hardest thing about indie filmmaking that um, people really don't understand at times, only those that are in it, is the time. You know, we just don't, any filmmakers, we don't have the time to do certain things. Like, you know, <clears throat> we may write a script, you know, but when you want to start to flesh it out live, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to start fleshing it out like on the set, you know, not just like during rehearsals, you know, you kind of work it out there. But when you're on the set, you know, and now it's real, you know, live bullets are flying, you know, you want to sometimes take your time and really kind of flesh things out. And a lot of times you just don't have it. And I think that that is why I think indie filmmaking is just something to to really appreciate when you do see anything done, you know, at an indie level, because, you know, it's not like a bigger movie where you can kind of sit back and take it in at times and really kind of flesh out a story or flesh out a scene or get the people you really want or go through the process of actually, you know, interviewing people for certain roles or certain positions uh, the way you really want to, or just have the money to, to maybe get somebody or, or equipment uh, of a certain level that you can't normally, that you know you can get, but but with, with Wendy, you can't get it. So you deal with like, I'm just gonna get a DSLR from Best Buy, or you know, I'm gonna pick up a quick black magic camera for $2,000, $3,000, whatever, or I'm gonna go red, a red camera for a day that's gonna cost me a damn near $1,000 or something like that, just to rent the damn thing, you know? So it's like, these are very, very limited moments that you just have to deal with and try to make the best of it and just to kind of get anything totally done with the limited resources you have is challenging on its own i think it would be great to have someone to actually do a, like a documentary on strictly indie filmmaking i mean i would love to see that you know hey people say hey why don't you just do it i'm like you know what documentary filmmakers is a skill set Everything, every subject, every sector is a skill set. And I really want to see someone that has a high skill set doing documentaries, do something like that. You've never really seen that, right? Like, wouldn't you want to see that? Wouldn't you want to see? You always see behind the scenes of movies that come on DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, that you see in the theater, you know, or maybe heard that won an award somewhere. But you don't really understand. Like, if you're just somebody who wants to know what it is to be at a lower level, you, you, have, you have no idea until you get in there. And that goes for any any position uh, uh, that, that you're going into, you know? So when you get in there, it's a big surprise. So I think that the uh, one thing about challenges of indie filmmaking, um, I always say that you have to really, really be concerned with uh, is the, the lack of resources that you're gonna have during the day. You do your best to go ahead and try to make sure you have your food, you have your water, you know, you have a safe environment, you know, everyone is there on time. And a lot of these things don't happen very good. It's always something's going on, you know, either someone comes in late um, and then, you know, you don't have time to kind of get everything you need, you know, that, and that's the stress. Or maybe you want to get something to eat and then, it's, you know, the food runs out. Or if you want to get some, get something to drink, maybe the good drinks run out or, or the water gets a little too warm or, or whatever it is. It's something going on during the process of, of just doing the scene, you know. Uh, Transportation is a big part of it too. You know, everyone has to get to whatever they have to get to the place that you're going to film or whatever and you got to make sure that everyone can get there on time however they want to get there even if it's you doing the movies that you're a director producer you may have to go out there and they pick up the actor pick up the dp pick up the the pa you know you have to plan all this a uh, planning is such a huge huge part of anything but when it comes to indie it becomes very very hard at times you know i mean that is why you want to try to do your best and get the best people behind you somebody people who have a good work ethic, who are dependable, who are always going to be there as much as they can and is very excited about what they're doing with you and you're excited about doing that same thing with them. That is why it's so important just to have that core of people just to kind of make things a little smoother because all in all, the bubble that you're in is going to be pretty, pretty hard at times, you know? And it's not every time you film is going to be fun. A lot of times it feels like work. I mean, it feels like another fucking job, you know? It's like you don't you're doing it 
because you love it, but the moment at times it feels like it's another gig. You know, you got like you like getting stressed out. You know, maybe someone's not working with you. Maybe an actor's not listening to what you need them to do. You know, all these things happen. So since all of these lightning bolts and all of these things are coming your way that could just disturb your your flow, your creative process uh, during that time. Uh, you need to have somebody or some people around you that is that is just solid, you know, as much as you possibly can. Um, even if you have to have your parents or you have to have your wife or, or your husband or someone there, a sister or brother, somebody, you know, or your best friend, something that kind of gives you some type of, you know, peace when everything goes awry. And, uh, the you know, so, the, you know, these are things that you, you're going to need no matter how big you get, but when it really, when it gets to indie filmmaking, it really is a, it really helps a whole, whole lot. Um, uh, because you, know, you gotta, you gotta understand one thing. The challenge is, is to reward at times, because if you can get it done with all of those challenges and you see on top, you know, you see in a screen, you go to a film festival that you were blessed to be taken in, you know, and then people are sitting there with you watching your work, you know, it, it's really worth the time. It's really worth all of the headache that you have to go through. Um, so the challenges, man, are just, can, can just come from every direction, come from so many directions, you know, and these are things that if you go out there and you want to start doing, you want to start filming, you want to start acting, you want to start producing, you know, you have to understand one thing is make sure you get those people around you first and foremost that are going to be close to you as solid as you possibly can. If you have to break some hearts, you have to have some tears, or you may have to like have break a friendship up because you maybe know that person just not what you need right now, but they swear they are, and you in your heart know it just won't work for whatever reason, but you want them there, but maybe not at certain moments You know, during the process. You must do what you have to do to get it done, because no one knows the vision unless you know. Until you, only you do. You know, even as an actor, you know, you're trying to get your point across of trying to do the character right the way you feel best, and you try to you collaborate, of course, with the director because the director wants the character done a certain way. So you're doing your best to try to get that character out for the director, and the producer, right? Mostly the director, and well, this is the same person, yeah. But you know, it's you know so. That that on the actor is a, a stress alone, and then the director in the, themselves, director, producer, writer, half the time, one person is going to have like six jobs, like myself. You know, um, you know that one person, like me, is going to be the writer, the director, the producer, the editor, the choreographer. You know, the the the, uh, the person who does the sound grading and the sound design. You know, so you're going to have all the and of course the project manager. That's a big deal. I mean, I mean, let me roll back for a second. You are the project manager. If you've never been doing a project manager before in your life, do a film. If you've never done a film yet, or, even, or at any level, you know, small, whatever, you know, uh, long, short, just do one. You know, if you do one, it would teach you so much. If you just did one, it would really teach you what it means to be a project manager, pretty much. You will first have to. Of course, find the story that you want, right? So you say, okay, I have a story. Well, you just, then you're going to have to flesh out that story in the script. So that script you have to be happy with as dialogue, you know, character development, uh, environment, um, you know, where the stories, the arcs are going. You have to first be happy with that. Then after that, then you have to find the people that you want to play in it. But even before that, you have to get an idea of, number one, what equipment do I have? Like, how do I film this thing? And how would I edit this thing? Like, I wouldn't even worry about the actors and all that stuff. I worry about, like, just the equipment, just the, the it, 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 how are you going to do it if you did do it? If you had everybody there, like, if everyone's sitting in front of you, actors and all, they're sitting there. Like, what do you do? Like, what's the first thing you're going to do? So that's why you think about, okay, okay, I got this camera, I got, I got, uh, I got uh, uh, this sound equipment. Uh, I have this person going to run run the sound equipment. This person going to run the camera. If it's not yourself, then you say, "Where am I going to do this?" Okay, in the environment. Okay, it could be your house, but you may have another job just to pay for everything. So then you have to schedule, you know, your time around wherever you're going to be. So say it's your house. That's really really convenient, you know. Then you say, "Well, we could do it this day and the other," but doesn't mean that the people that you get are going to have the same time as you do. 
So now you think of this. Then you say, okay, okay, I do it in my house. I make it real easy because you can do it like I do a person right now with this. It's not even in my house. These are people's property. These are out somewhere outside in the forest somewhere or maybe somewhere in some type of theater that I film in or someone's boat. It's always somebody else's property but, but your own. And that's a whole another beast in itself because, of course, then you have to make a deal with the owner. You have to have to kind of somehow accommodate them as well, you know, and try to convince them that your stuff is all right. The people that are coming to their property is fine. Your job is to convince them that. You got to sell that. So let's say to your house again. I mean, you know, it was easy. Then you say, okay, can everybody that I need get here on one day, right? And you say, okay, now you have to go through the scheduling of that, trying to find everybody's time because half the time everybody has another job, of course, to pay their bills with, right? So they have a nine to five a lot of times, you know? And most of the time, you don't have money to pay the actors, you know? If, you know, or anybody, really, you just want to kind of get this material done so they can all see their work and use that going forward to get better things. So you all are trying to build this house. You're trying to build something together. So when you try to build something, who's going to lead it? Well, it ends up with you if you start to do the whole thing. So you got to tell yourself, I have to be here. I have to be the person to engage. I got to be the cheerleader. You know, I'm, I got to be the one that knows exactly what they want because everybody's going to want to see you know exactly where you're going. They don't want any doubts. The worst thing is to be anywhere with someone running it who, is, who, who has no confidence in themselves. You get scared. When you do, you're on a plane and, you know, the flight attendants all look nervous. They're all sweating. They're all stuttering. When do you feel nervous? You're like, yo, what y'all doing? You want y'all know? I don't know. What's happening, yo? You know? No, you want that person who's asking you to, Come with me. I got you. Let's do this together. You know, you have to inspire everybody around you. And I'm talking on behalf of the directors and producers, the people who are actually putting this together. You know, you have to be the one that they look up to because they want to. They don't want to. Most of the time, the people who are coming as actors or the PAs or whatever, they just want to be, listen, just tell me what you need. That's why we're here. And I want to create something with you. You're going to have to be the one to say, okay, come with me. I got you. Don't worry about it. Come on my back. I got you. So that whole psychological point of it, you have to get ready for, and that's and that's on that's not even that has nothing to do with you having your your story together and everything else. You have the equipment that you're going to use, or who's going to use the equipment, and when you're going to use it, and where the people are going to meet. Now, when you think about this, then you think about rehearsals, for example, right? That's another managing nightmare you can have because you have to be smart about number one, how you write in the script. Because you have to write a script realistically where if everybody or whatever place you have in that store, in that scene, you have to tangibly be able to get it. Like you have to be able to say, I can do this, you know, or if you have an ensemble cast, right, you have to somehow coordinate it where you don't need maybe two or three people for that one moment. You can get the other two, three people because the other people will be hard for you to get them all together at once. So you want to break it up as much as you can. But your script has to be written that way. You have to have moments where you can say, I can get this story, this, this point across, but I don't need everybody in one spot. And if I do, I'm going to limit maybe for one scene or one moment or something. Just to show the audience that everybody's there at once to kind of give that illusion. But people only care what's in here. So you just worry about, okay, I can get two people, two people, two people. All right, I do this. I, I break it up in pieces. Make sure your story runs that way. And that's a challenge. And that's why when you put the, the story together, you're freaking project managing the entire thing, like the entire story, because you're not just thinking about, okay, is this is a good story, you know, how the dialogue's going, does it flow well? Not just that. You worry about, okay, how am I going to film this? And what is the, what order am I going to film this? Because I don't have anything. Indie filmmakers, guys, you know what I mean out there. We just trying to get our work out there. You know, we're not worrying about the money's going to come later. You're just worrying about proving to people, showing to people who you need to that I can do this. You know what I mean? I can get this done no matter what. We just got to come together. You know what I mean? Make this really strong chain and present it. But first, we need to get this done. 
So you, if you're a director producer, this is what I'm talking on behalf of them, you have to kind of put all this together, right? Now, after you get the scheduling and everyone's kind of like, okay, cool, and then, you know, everyone's talking, you get, you get everybody together, and you say you have any rehearsal, cool. Now say, let's jump. Let's do a big jump right into production, okay? Now you're filming, okay? Day one, call time, 8 o'clock in the morning, everyone has to come in. Now you say, okay, let's roll back a little bit. Who's going to do the hair? Who's going to do the makeup? Are they all doing their makeup? Where's the clothes coming from? Are they using their clothes? Okay, so you may already have that down. You say, you know what? I'm going to do something that people can just use their own clothes. Now tell them what they need. Or maybe I could buy one or two things for some of my characters. But the way to cut costs, you have to find a way that everyone could somehow supply their own, you know, wares if, if need be. Mine is, doesn't work that way. And here and there, but most, of my, but most of my stuff is all fantasy, so I have to buy everything, you know? So then you have to worry about, you know, the expenses. So you're saying, okay, expenses, really big deal. That's one of the major things as well, expenses. How am I going to pay for all of this, if anything? So clothes, that's why you see most of the indie filmmakers is always going to be on the time of now. Like most movies is always going to be at the present, not like a period piece or something in the future because that requires clothing, that requires you know, costumes, real costumes, hair, makeup, you know, that's something that you don't normally have on all the time, and you're going to need uh, a makeup artist for that. You probably have, you're going to make, you need to make a boss anyway, but, you know, you need to make a boss maybe with a little more craft than if you do something of the present day. So you say, you know what, I don't need someone that good, just make yourself look good, you know what I mean? So you get that together. Now, let's just jump ahead again. And now we're filming that day. So now you're saying you're in your house that day and you have the actors you need to film that day. So as you're filming that day, you got to make sure, number one, everyone has something to eat, you know. Do you know, you know, do, do you have a time for your equipment? Go, equipment gets hot. You got to let it cool off every now and then. So, you know, you take 10 or whatever, you know. So little things like that. Or when you, do you have every, all the lights that you need? Who's supplying lights? Did you buy the lights? Are you getting some lights from somebody else? Are you using the own lights? Now, the equipment that you have, um, hopefully, I'm not even going through like all the little technical things like before. Did you test the camera that you have and certain lighting that you want for those scenes? Because you're going to need to do a lot of tests before you even shoot because you have to understand exactly what type of lighting you're going to have for these scenes, you know, and just make sure that the, the day comes that everyone only the people have to do know is the actors have to know their lines and where they have to be. You're showing where they have to be. And you may have any equipment. You should just say, okay, we're going to have this light here, whatever. The camera's going to be in this IS, ISO. It's going to be at F, this F-stop. You know where it's going to be because you already did the testing. Because you're always going to want to make the day of the filming as easy as possibly can for everybody involved. And that starts, again, with the writer-producer. More than likely, like I said, it's always the same person like me, writer, producer, director, editor, choreographer, you know, uh, a sound design, you know, person, uh, you know, casting agent, uh, all that. So, you know, you have to make sure the environment, the moment is smooth. And not just for them. Of course, it's going to be for them. But it really helps you. Because now you pretty much really know exactly what you need to do. It's no different than studying for a test when you're in school. If you know the answers, it's a lot easier when you sit there and start reading those questions. You already kind of know the answers. Or if you don't, you know a process to take to kind of joggle your memory a little bit and figure it out. Say, oh, it's the C. Same way on a set. It's like a test. You know, you know what you want. You know where you want to go. Now, when things turn a little bit, it won't be so hard for you to make the necessary adjustments to get what you need. Because a lot of times, things are not going to go as smooth as you want it. It's not going to fit. It's not going to look the way you thought about it in your head half the time. It really isn't. The magic about it is the magic. When those things happen, when you're filming, you catch those magic moments that you didn't even have planned. So that's, that's the amazing thing of doing something, just this filming period, you know, and going and, and, and having just, just being there on the set, doing your thing, directing, doing whatever you have to do. So all of these is situations, you know, um, that just to kind of get to the day of shooting, you know, it's a lot. And then when you go into post and say everything is fine, right? So you got the days and get the actors in the, in that day. You got to film what you want to do in your house or whatever it is. And everything that you filmed, you already did it. How long it took you. And now you go into the post. And hopefully you know how to edit. And make sure you always edit. 
Don't have someone else edit your own idea. You make sure that if you can't use the equipment, I always say this over and over again, you're always going to have to edit your own stuff. It's your work. You know, if you did the movie, don't give it to somebody else to chop it up, to, to kind of look at the way that they, you know, kind of chop it away. They feel is best, even if they have your notes. Only you know those idiosyncrasies. Only you know those very detailed moments that no one's going to see, but you know, and you're going to throw it in there. You you know how you're going to coordinate it, and you know why you filmed it the way you did. You know why you lit it the way you did, and you know why you told those actors or asked those actors to say certain lines a certain way for a certain moment. Only you know that, and you can explain all of that to an editor. Those things have to come out of you. You have to direct that editor or the person who's helping you edit or whatever, or even, you know, to say, hey, this is what we're going to, we're going to put this scene here, here, and here. Now, the best thing out of all this when it comes to post is if you edit yourself, you don't need an editor. Like myself, I do my editing, you know, myself. I could take my time to come home, be quiet, go through all of my shots, document my shots, label all my shots, see where I need, what I don't want. That's, that's the fun of it. That's the jewel about making film because now it's yours, you know? Then you start shaping it together, you know? It's a lot of work, it's time, but you know what? I'm one of those guys that I just love it. It's so much work at the end, you know, kind of syncing the, the, vo the vocals, you know, and then getting the music together with your composer. And that's another thing too, your composer. And for me, I have effects. So if you have some kind of a story that has some type of effects, you have to get an effects artist. Well, how good is your effects artist? But those are things that you just have to make sure you have before you even start anything. So all you have to do is give those people, you know, the scenes they need to work on and bring it back so you can drop it into, into your timeline on your nonlinear, of course, you know, software. So you just understand that the more that you can do, the easier it will be, the better the movie will come out, and the more rewarding you will feel on top of everyone involved. Because everyone involved then knows that no one else had their hand in their work but you, the same person who put it all together in the first place that was there you know, during the interview that hired them, that was there when they were filming it, that was there scheduling with them, that was there talking with them behind the scenes. And then now when they sitting back waiting for this product to be, you know, put together, they know that no one's hand was in it but the very person that they were with all through that time. And that for most time, for the most part, should make people very, very comfortable. It should make them like a the ease in their mind. You know, that should work out all right because we're all on the same page. We all knew why we filmed certain scenes the way we did it. They, you know, we all know why the actors did what they did for whatever reason on that moment. We all were in conjunction. We're a team. We're a fucking team. So that is one big thing about the challenges of filmmaking, especially indie filmmaking. It's, it's very personal, but that's one great thing about indie filmmaking because it's not like a big studio, you know? Well, you have a thousand people running all over the place and you only know 10 names. And you know, you have 2000 employees only know like 12 names. You know, you know everybody that's in front of you. There's nothing like that. And you can get exactly what you want and you get your final cut, of course. You know what I mean? It's yours. And then you can throw it out there and you can see whoever likes it, who don't like it. You throw in the film festivals and see who wants it, who doesn't, you know? But you know what? You want that evenness. You don't want everyone to like, you really just don't. And it gets boring after you want, you're not perfect. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. You know, not even Star Wars was perfect. Not even Lord of the Rings are perfect. Not even the classic, you know, Saudi Arabia was perfect. Everything had their, hole, their holes, but those holes make it realistic. Those are the holes that we hang on to because we know this was something created by us. And it's not going to be perfect, but you know what? It's going to be good enough to entertain you. So that's what makes me go into my next bit about making your story work. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. And this is just my opinion. Remember, a lot of this stuff is just my opinion. You know, you have anything like to say or something that you want to uh, just kind of put in. It's like, it's like you know, you know we, want to, we want to chime in on like your experiences or whatever you're know, doing indie filmmaking. Please do. I love to hear people's stories about their work, their experiences of actually doing the film, you know. Um, but making your story work, uh, to me, almost is pretty easy for me, okay? Uh, Storytelling, um, conceptualizing, um, writing, writing dialogue, all that stuff, the way I want it comes very easy for me because I know how I want people to say things, where it's going, all that good stuff. 
But all in all, making your story work is one thing, one big thing, right? And I've said this a thousand times, but I love saying it because it's one of those things that, you know, sometimes you forget and even I forget at moments, but I have to remember, hey, this is what matters. It's ego. You have to make sure that whatever story you have, who are you, who are you making the story for? And you have to be truthful to yourself. If you say, yeah, I'm going to make a story, I'm going to put it out there for the world to see and whatever, you know, um, then you have to say, well, what, what would make people want to keep watching me? What would make somebody, right, out there want to, you know, um, pay me to watch me, you know? And you're thinking about when I say me, it's your work, you know, your film, your music, your painting. Like, what are you doing? So pretending to like filmmaking, obviously, you have to say, well, I'm going to make a story that my genre that I'm into, whatever I'm into, they're going to really dig this. They're going to really have a good time with this. This is going to be fire. Everyone's going to go crazy. But I have to put certain elements in here that I know my genre just loves to see and loves to hear, you know? But to yourself, you may say, you know what? I love this too. Um, but I want to put this and that and the other, but maybe for yourself to the audience and may drag, maybe something that drags too much or maybe it's a little more over the top. You know, so you have to be truthful about where you are going with this. So are you going it, are you making it just for yourself? So if no one likes it and you just like it, the fuck, you know, the hell with it. Now that's fine. I mean, you have to have an ego enough to want to make whatever you want and just throw it out there and see it. And then at the other time, another part of you have to say, you know what? I'm going to have my ego drive me to make this. But when I am actually start creating it, start chipping away the rough edges, I want to make it for you the best way I possibly can. And I hope you like it. If you, you know, it's yours after that. You know? And the one thing, when you make your film or whatever you do, you got to understand one thing. When you make something and you put it out to the world, right? You put it out to you. you know? And everyone's seeing it. It's theirs now. So you, know, you can't take it back. They can do what they want with it. You know? They can crush it. They can love it. They can embrace it. They can pass it on, share it. They can do what they want with it. But understand, once you let it go, it's not yours anymore. And that's the beauty of it. Because now it's a part of you that's gone there forever. It may be a little sentimental. It may be a little corny. But it's true. It's a part of you that you can never get back. But that's okay. Because that's, that, that piece was designed to be given out. That piece of you was designed to be given out. Always understand that. When we have a talent, something that's great, something that people really gravitate to, we have pieces of us that sit there that are meant to be given out. And we do our best to make sure it's molded right, make sure it's cleaned up all nice and pretty and stuff is smelling all good. <gasps> there you go. I hope you like it. And that's what we do. And that's all we can do. But always understand, be very conscious, but not only yourself, but what, what audience or who are you trying to give this to? Because all in all, when you finish creating what you're doing and before you send it out there, in my opinion, you have to kind of cut that ego down. I've said this before, I know, you know, and then say, whoa, okay, now if I was in the audience and I saw this, what would I wouldn't want to see nor care to see, you know, because the, you know, it slows the story down or the moment, or maybe you know, I need something to speed this moment up. You have to be conscious about that and then make the necessary edits make the necessary changes. And if you are blessed enough to be able to do reshoots, you know, retakes, all that, then, you know, you're, you're just fortunate. And that's another part of indie filmmaking. A lot of times you don't even have time to go back and do your reshoots because, you know, when it's done, everyone goes back to work and then try to get everyone back is tough as hell. Sometimes it's not even worth it. And even if it is worth it, depending where you're filming, can you get that spot back? You know what I mean? If it's in your house, yeah, okay. But if it's some place that you rented or some place that you made a deal with the owner of the house or the business, you're going to have to speak with them. You're going to have to kind of pay the place again, you know, to kind of redo everything again. And you have to get everyone back one more time. But again, it's something that indie filmmakers don't have the pleasure of having, which is why when you see indie films, it can be a little rough, but that's okay. I love seeing it at times because I know they have one shot. 
and they're never going to go back to that shot again unless, of course, they get a big, bigger deal. But that one moment, those moments are going to be it's etched for life. And they had one shot. They did the best they could with what they had. And that's why when you see an indie film or something small, don't crush it. I mean, some of them, I'm not going to lie. You know, everyone is not cute. Every baby is not cute. Some of them just look gross. And some movies just look bad. And they are what they are. But one thing they all have in common, they completed it. They did what they wanted to do with what they had. And they had the balls and the cojones to let everyone look at it and critique on it. Just for you, that is awesome. It doesn't matter. That's something you have to understand. Even if you're an actor per se, right? So you say, yeah, you, know, you always say to yourself, man, I hate seeing myself. You hear that a lot. It's very common, right? Oh, I don't like what I did there. But everyone else, man, it's not much you can do. You do what you can and you throw it out there, you know? And you let see people, you know, see what happens. See, that's all you can do. But when you make a story, always understand, know what, what audience you're going to. You know what I mean? And what that audience would want. But always, always your best, yo, is take a step back, man. Take a step back. Sometimes when you watch your movie or do your scene or even when you do your script, and take a step, step back and say, if I was looking at this myself, would I want to see this? Would I start doing the whole breathing thing, you know, in the theaters, you know, like, if you start doing that on your own and you know that people are going to do it, then maybe you do your best to kind of tighten it up. Or maybe something has to be extended, whatever. And always, always film more than you have to. You know, that's a call and a rule. That's filming one-on-one. You always film more than you have to, so you have more to play with. But that's something sometimes you don't have the luxury of doing either in indie. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't have the time to say, well, I'm going to film a whole lot of stuff and I'm just going to put it together. Man, you have all that time? I hope you do. I mean, you know, it's only so many hours in the day. There's so many hours that the people around you who's helping you have time to hang out or do this. You have to be real, real tight with your stuff half the time. You can always, you can always, always, you know, um, kind of add something as you go along the day. Like you're filming something or whatever, and you know, you add a little more. But I'm telling you, the key is, is efficiency. You have no choice. You can't sit here and just film shit that's not going to be on. You don't have the time nor the money. And, you know, and that's the challenge, too. So when you make your story, when I say, like, you know, making your story work, make sure your shit works with just what you have, and that's it. You know? And if you are able to pull a little more, then, you know, you do it. But half the time with indie filmmakers, that's all they got. They ain't got nothing else. Ain't no director's cut. Ain't no extended edition. Huh. You, you, you're looking at the extended edition. This is all I got. That's all the time I had. I ain't got no more time. So it's just one of those things I just had to kind of come out tonight and just talk about, you know. It just kind of hit me because, you know, no one ever really tells you the little things about when you do a film, you know. Uh, when you decide to do or take on a project like this, they always give you the 30,000-foot view about just the generalization. But the realization, the, the, the little things that you need to know you find out the hard way, and a lot of times that can be discouraging for a lot of people. You know, when you're getting people yell at you for some reason, or maybe people leaving your production, you know, or you get a, or everyone saying no to you, or people are not just not listening to you, or people just don't come back, or people just don't make the appointments. Like all these things, it really comes out, you know, of, you know, getting the right people. And say so you have the equipment, and maybe the equipment's not working the way you want to. Maybe it's the look. You can't get the look the way you want to. You're trying to find out how to get the look the way you need to, and maybe realize that the equipment you have is not as good as you want it. Or if it is good as you want it, you know that, wow, okay, I need someone else to maybe work on something. Where am I going to get that other person? Who can I depend on? You know? Um, and then when you do, and when you, when I see, you, know, you, you know, then you think about the environment. All those things that come into play, you become a fucking finance, you, you become finance and a project manager all in one. Prime project manager does have to do with finance too, but you really, really deal with learning how to deal with budgeting. You start dealing with scheduling. You know, you start just dealing with all those aspects of building anything. So I just want to uh, kind of throw it out there to you guys, uh, something I just started, you know, I was thinking about today that I just really want to express and kind of get out. 
And I know a lot of you guys out there who have done this, have seen this, have heard this, have gone through this and, you know, maybe found out the hard way of, you know, when you actually going out there to try to do this. Because a lot of, you know, before I go, those out there who never did a film or maybe don't want to do a film, they're just like looking at them and they, they understand, you know, it takes time. But, you know, doing a film is, is one of the hardest things I think to do, period. Now, listen, I'm not going to put ourselves with physicians and all that shit and brain surgery. I'm not doing that. But I tell you what, all in all, or, you know, someone, you know, being a soldier, I don't, I'm not putting myself on those levels. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, hell, it's fucking harder than, be, than working in finance. It's fucking harder than just being a manager of some, like, office. It's a lot of work because... Always think about this. If you're a manager of any business, of any corporate business, you got a business to stand on, good or bad. There's a business to stand on. There's a budget, you know, uh, there's capital. Uh, you know, there are a lot of resources uh, that, you know, that, that you can take and make your job better, and make the employees better or whatever. You know, there's things there. But when you stand on nothing but air, and still trying to make some and build something with air, that's a whole other ball game. And when you put that together, and people say, "Oh, the only thing they see is the finished product," but I'm like, I always say, if you're not sure about what filmmaking is about uh, at all, then just think of this: <laughs> say to yourself, "I'm going to give you a script today. Film this by the end of the week. What will be the first thing you do? What's the very first thing you're going to do?" Then think about it. And when you start thinking about it, then you get a really good idea of us, what us filmmakers, actors, producers, just to entertain the people, to try to make a living on what it takes. Because most people that, that are not in the industry don't understand um, all the, what it, you know, how hard it can be and how hard it is, period. Um, they see all the pretty lights and everything, and that's our job. That's why they pay us to see our stuff because we give them pretty lights and pretty people and pretty stories. But to get to that level, to get to the final, the, the, to get, just get to the, you know, to the finish line on any project, it's like going to a fucking jungle. Yo, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of elements. But I always say, every time someone asks me, and a few times, not like all the time, but that's the example I give them. You know, I'm like, yeah, they say, well, you know, it's a take a lot to do this or, you know, how you guys do it. And I'm like, well, think of it this way. And I grab like a piece of paper and I'm like, here's a script. He said, okay. I said, now go ahead and film it for me and bring it back to me. It's done. What are you going to do? Figure it out. And then when they think about it, they're like, oh, okay, I don't even know what the story is. I got it. Okay, so, you know, smart guys were thinking about, okay, I can get a story. Okay, so I can get the actors. What am I going to get for the actors? Okay, the equipment. Where am I going to get the equipment from? I'm going to buy the equipment. I'm going to buy the equipment. Okay, cool. Okay, where am I going to film this? Where am I going to film this? Okay, I have this here. I have kids here. I have this time here. Where can I get this? When you start thinking about all the logistics about it, just to do like a short, then you realize, wow, that's, this is a lot. Like, yeah, man. It's not like, you, you know, it's not like a regular job. You have a business to lean on all day. You know, they got capital, they got budget, they got everything there for you. What you have to do is fucking drive the damn car, but you're not making it. You're not in a, you're not in a freaking, if you, you know, if you're in a junkyard somewhere or you're in a warehouse, there's nothing but pieces around you and they say, go, go build that car, man. And here's a book, figure it out. That's how filmmaking is. It's pretty much something in pieces like a car. You throw it in the middle of a damn warehouse and they give you a book and they give you some tools. And they say, go ahead and build that. We need it by the end of the week. I don't know how to make a car. Well, figure it out. Here's a book. Filmmaking a lot of times is not a book. You just have to kind of wing it. You have to know what to do. Um, you know, what, what you need. Figure it out. Ask people. Lean on people's ex expertise to kind of get what you need, you know, and realize that it's, it's, it's a team. No matter what, it's, it's a team. So it's one of those things. So I just wanted to kind of throw it out there, guys. Um, so, you know, and uh, just talk about um, the challenges. You know, I, like I said, I mean, even places I, you know, I work at now or whatever and worked before and stuff, I'm looking at the managers and all the thing. I'm like, yeah, you have no idea. You think it's hard, what you have. But mm -mm, it ain't hard. Because if you don't like it, you leave and go somewhere else. What you try to make something that you have to make money on? You know what I mean? 
And then you have people are going to now, you know, that, that are looking at you. You're leading people. You I mean, you're leading a lot of people, you know, to, to, to somewhere. So, you know, and they, everyone's hoping that they can make something good out of your idea. So, but all right, guys, uh, love you all. I'm going to now relax. Um, I have my absence. Check it out if you don't know what it is. Awesome. Yummy. Yeah, man. Love it. So I'm going to relax tonight. Uh, I filmed um, my scene on Friday. I'm going to try to get some live pictures. Well, it's again, live feed going if possible uh, Friday. So look out for that. If not, check out a whole bunch of new uh, pictures and probably some clips and stuff. What we did Friday to do some stuff over uh, with my team on season two. Uh, one of our first scenes on season two is awesome. Uh, and again, um, I finally found uh, uh, we had, we had a, uh, an opening for a character for Kayla. Uh, it was a hard decision, but I did make the decision for uh, this one here. Uh, and her name is going to be Constance Payne. Well, her name is Constance Payne. She's going to play Kayla Covizian, um, the psychotic, uh, 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 sword wheeling uh, concubine of the baddie Sill. So uh, it's going to be fun. So I can't wait till we start to kind of build on that, get the scene done. It's going to be badass. And um, anyway, all right, love you all. Uh, spread the word around. And also, we're always looking for sponsors. I was thinking about that. We're always looking for sponsors. We're always looking for angel investors. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to go. And we have our series that's coming on Google Play, by the way. I forgot to mention that. We are going to be on Google Play hopefully really soon in four countries. We are now on Amazon in five countries, and we own two other uh, um, distribution companies, one called Binge Horror and another one called Avail Films. That's a deal that has a deal with Lionsgate. I don't know where it's going right now, but it's somewhere along the line. So check it out. We'll be out on them real soon. So, all right, love you all. And uh, look out for a crazy short next year that we're going to do. We're still doing this, but we're going to take a break from doing this because we're doing it for a few years, and we're going to do something exciting. So it's not for kids. It's going to be crazy. I can't wait. Ooh. So um, look out for that uh, late next year. That's going to be fucking awesome. So I can't awesome you. I, I, I don't know what the subject's going to be yet, but I know it's going to be exciting, sexy and adventurous and quite bloody. So get ready. Anyway, love you all. You guys have a good night. Be safe out there. Keep doing what you're doing. Never stop. Keep producing, baby. Peace.